How's that looking? Oh, better. How you guys doing? Chris Ignato here and let me tell you it's mid-February and it's in the 60s right now. It's been raining for a few days and I'm getting excited for herping adventures. Finding those frogs and salamanders and all the amphibians getting ready to breed but I think it's a bit early in the year but I'm getting ready. Let me show you. I've got my one LED light ready for filming at night because most of this is going to take place at night. I've got my wonderful tough cam that takes great still pictures and close-ups. I video with the one that I'm filming with now, but this is great for still photos. Of course, I've got my headlamp ready and my batteries and field guides, but I think it's still a bit early. So stay tuned, guys. We're going herping soon. We're still too early, I think. But I'm just gonna check a bit more over here, because the first thing they do is head for the deepest part. And that's where they want to put their the bulk of their eggs because that means that part will dry up the last you know okay so the weather all of a sudden isn't so perfect for the amphibian migrations yet uh, like I said it's a bit early in the year the past few days were great well the past week was great and tomorrow's gonna be awesome but not yet today's the wrong day tonight's the wrong night uh, but just nice wetlands here this would be a great spot there's a lot of wooded hills with rocks and everything, good spot for spotted salamanders, probably four-toed salamander, eastern redbacks. Okay guys, so the nights are in the high 30s to mid 40s, give or take. Uh, today's in the 60s, tomorrow's going to be in the 70s, and it's still February. We're going to have a little bit of rain tonight, we had some last night, we're going to have some tomorrow, in fact high chance of rain all day and night tomorrow. So we're hitting, uh, looking for wetlands, looking for herps, looking for the salamander migration, and hopefully in the near future, the spring peepers and wood frogs are going to start up. So far, no dice, but persistence pays off. So let's get back to the field. So right now we're heading towards a vernal pool where I've seen spotted salamanders in the past. Hopefully we'll see some, but it might be a little bit too early in the year. You've got to be pretty careful. See that? See how easy the mud stirs up? you got to be careful not to stir up too much mud as you step along or else you're not going to be able to see anything under the water. Also, you've got to be really careful on where you step. You know, you could be stepping in a hole or a branch that could step through your boot. Um, you don't want to step on something alive. And when you step in the mud, sometimes up to your waist, it's a lot of muscle action to pull your foot back out. And if you've got back problems, it's even more difficult. So obviously we're too early because if we were late, there'd be egg masses. And if we were really late, there'd be the remains of egg masses. So got to try again and just keep trying till we catch them. Got redbacks everywhere today. So check it out guys. Uh, we hit this vernal pool and even though it's not raining tonight or anything like that, the spotted salamanders have begun to breed. And look at them, what an impressive species. Isn't that magnificent? I mean, this is a large salamander. Look at that. Look at their little feet. They have four toes up front and they have five in the back, which is characteristic of all salamanders except for the four-toed salamander. 
the best time to see these is at the end of the winter when the rains start coming out and the nights are about 44 degrees and there's a lot of rain and overcast and it's nice and dark these salamanders will come out by the thousands looking for vernal pools such as this one behind me to breed often the males will get there first in order to establish territory and wait for the females to show up and when the females get there the fun begins an interesting thing about spotted salamanders is when they breed, the males actually will deposit a spermatophore on the ground and the female will walk along and pick it up. And I'm sure there's a courtship ritual and stuff like that, but that's how her eggs become fertilized. And look at all those costal grooves on the side. Those are those lines you see where it looks like ribs, but they're not actually ribs. Those costal grooves are believed to be a way of conserving water to keep the body and skin moist so that they don't dry out when they're migrating across the land. The guy who described this, his name's Jacob something, way back in the day, who found these, he made a mistake and he said ambistoma, but he meant to say amblistoma with an L, which means wide mouth. Uh, it's really debated as to what that word really means. Some people say cup mouth, other people say wide mouth. And as you see, these guys have a very wide mouth. Yeah, aren't they soft? Yeah, I can't believe it. <laughs> What's it feel like to you? Uh, she's really silky and like, I don't know, when I touched her, I expected her to be more firm. Yeah. She's kind of like touching a soft piece of dough or an uncooked breadstick. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's a perfect way to describe her. Yeah, they're really soft and it's crazy that these are subterranean amphibians, you know, and then they do these huge migrations across the landscape you know, dragging their bellies and stuff along the ground. Oh, a little wolf spider. Huh. And, uh, you know, it doesn't, doesn't rough them up. you think they'd, they'd have, like, some kind of reinforced belly or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, they're in there. They're, they're cold-blooded creatures. It makes you wonder how they can function in such cold water. Does the temperature in my hands bother it? No. In fact, if anything, it'll give it a bit more energy. See how long that tail is. So what do you think about the salamander's temperature? Um, it's really cold, isn't it? Yeah, it's about the same temperature as my hands now, I think. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you guys don't know, Heather has ice hands. Here, let's hold this tail for a sec. Show how long it is. Like, demonstrate that for the camera for a second. That's a long salamander. Isn't that a really cool salamander? They're so cute. Now, in our region, around here, this is the biggest salamander, but there is a larger species, the tiger salamander. I have yet to find one of those. And then there's one that's even larger, west of here, called the hellbender. Now that's a big salamander. 18 to 20 inches they can reach. That'll be another video, though. Spotted salamander. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's number one for our herping season. Yeah. What a great way to start the season, huh? Yeah. Okay, let's get going. Okay. One more thing. What'd you think about that sound? Of the tree falling? Yeah. Well, <laughs> it sounded like Bigfoot was coming through for us. Yeah, so what happened? Tell the viewers what happened. Uh, I heard this loud cracking sound and the sound of a large tree falling. The huge tree yeah. just basically cracked. Sounds like it cracked in half when it, as it was halfway down, didn't it? Mm -hmm. Like there was yeah. a crack, uh, a tipping, and then a snap in the middle, and then t a huge thump yeah. where it smashed into the ground. Uh -huh. That doesn't usually happen. <laughs> so. Hey guys, now really quick, if you like my videos, please hit the subscribe button, but don't forget to click that little bell icon or else YouTube will never inform you that I have a new video out. It's a YouTube thing. And trust me, I need all the help I can get. So please, click that bell icon for future notifications. And thanks a lot for watching, guys. I'm Chris Ignato, signing out.